Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. Welcome to episode five of my January Love Fest. Today I have two cards. One is a current one and one is one that I did back in 2021 using the paper pumpkin from that January. And this is the one that has the gold foil heart. I stamped this big stamp in the middle here using Poppy Parade. It has the very sweet petal pink hearts from back in 2021, and this color is still a, perma a current color. I used some little sequins and pearls. I bet you these little gold and this AB is from the fancy, for everything fancy sequin assortment. This black trim, I believe, was included because it's not been a Stampin' Up! trim and I've never bought that kind of trim. So this must be from what the kit had. Uh, I showed you that I have uh, maybe three or four of these bases left. So that is wonderful. Here, we'll hide this off to the side and finish because I want to share that this is the envelopes that were included. I did a white heat embossed envelope with the floating X's, O's, and hearts. What did I do inside here? Oh, so I did this, the scattered floral and heart mini stamp. All right, starting over with the second card, which is the card made recently. I did this one with some different colors. We had an inspiration pin. Libby and I crafted the day that I made this particular card. And this was a color. We did some color decisions. So I chose for my round element. I wanted to have kind of a 3D uh, triple heart effect. These hearts in the gold are from Be Mine, which is my favorite all-time heart set of dies. And this stitched heart is part of it. But for the round element, I decided to, to be pretty wild and I cut from Labels Aglow, which are in the current annual catalog, and I butchered it so bad because the name of this is not the same as the name of the stamps. Uh, most of the time they coordinate the stamp name with the die name, but in this case they didn't. So I thought these might be retired and they're not. They're not called Brightest Glow, which is the stamp name. They are called Labels Aglow. So this is actually a trimmed down version of the circle die that has like uh, maybe five rows of dots and you'll see that I trimmed down to only two rows of dots using a deckle circle I believe and then I roughed the edges up and then I actually applied early espresso from the spot this particular spot uh, onto the circle so what I one of the things I was mentioning about this card is that I did a lot of direct ink to paper using this spot and I highly recommend that you have spots instead of using your full-size pad there's there's effects that you can achieve using the spot that you just cannot replicate using like a sponge dauber or an indirect application of the ink. So uh, if you were ever worry, wondering if you could justify the purchase of the spots, I use spots for pretty much any direct application of ink, for instance, on an embossing folder. If I want to use a stamp alignment tool like the Stamparatus tool or any other alignment tool, the spot is way easier to manage than the full-size ink pad. And then when I use it to directly apply the color like I did here on the edge and of both the round and the edge of the torn paper, you're going to get fibers and things and possibly contaminate your inks somewhat. So it'd be better if you contaminated your spot threw it away and grabbed a new one 
You can buy them from Stampin' Up! to get five blanks per pack, and I have always used those. Uh, even back before I retired, I had full-size pads and spots because I like to do special techniques that the spots are safer to do with. So that is what I was trying to get across on the first time I was filming about this particular card. Uh, I then took a white core. I'm trying to see. Okay, so this white core uh, on the back side, it must be a remnant of some variety. I see some texture. Oh, you know what this is from? So this is brown that I ran through. It is a paper one called One Horse Open Sleigh, and I took a dark side of the paper, ran it through Timber 3D, just like I ran my Lost Lagoon through the Timber 3D embossing folder, and then I roughed it up to get the white core. So those that's some tricks to, uh, because Stampin' Up! doesn't have, they have a specialty white core pack that has a few colors, but if you want to achieve the look of the white core, you can always take a DSP. So I guess I'm moving on to another tip. Pick a DSP that has whatever color you want, run it through the embossing folder, and then use your sanding block on it to achieve the whole white core look without necessarily having a white core cardstock. Now the DSP is going to be thinner, so it's a little bit rougher to ma manipulate, and it's going to be, you know, it feels thinner than the thick core. And if you really wanted it to feel like a thick core, you can go ahead and glue it onto, say, a, a white, a basic white would be enough. Then run it through the Timber 3D and then sand off the color to have the white. Mine is thinner, so it's see how it's, it's a little bit more bent. And that is just the nature of the thinner paper thickness of the DSP. I hope that came out better. And then I did a little roughing of the edges here, folded them just a little bit uh, on the edges. The Hug Me and You're Cute, that is from Sweet Talk. The Purple uh, Love in the Different Languages is from Sweet Talk, and so is this vertical strip. The vertical strip was a leftover from, you've seen already my previous cards that use that striped paper. I really like that particular design. And then I thought that using the small, this is the small Be Mine scalloped heart. And it just happened that it fits the shape of these little cute Sweet Talk um, candy hearts well enough that I kind of use them as the central focus and it came out really nice. I went simple with my bow. I did not go with a heavy fluffy bow because I thought it would take away from the, uh, the 3D effects that I put on all the papers. Um, all of the papers are torn in some way, shape, or form except the glitter paper. Uh, the glitter paper is now, I think it's out of, out of stock. It is the gold glitter that had the adhesive on the back. And these little single hearts are from the, the long group heart die from the Be Mine dies. Uh, that group heart, not only can you make like 30 hearts instantly in two to three different sizes, you can also cut these little outline hearts out. And I have one tucked into the bottom corner here. And you can, if you look really carefully, see that I did cut them out from a group of them. Uh, but that particular die is probably the most useful die. And again, the set is at least three years old. It's called Be Mine, not B-E-E. -E. It's just B-B-E Mine, uh, if you want to look for that on the secondary market. And then I just doubled up the gold Baker's Twine. Again, shameless plug. They're from Hobby Lobby, and I would absolutely love Stampin' Up! to someday sell a complete set of metals of copper, silver, and gold. That would be my dream. And then let's see what I did on the inside of this one, because I am not sure. Should be purple, yep. So I did the purple group hearts, just like I did on the envelope. And then here is my 
favorite. And notice this is crooked. I don't really care if I don't get it centered and I, it's a little crooked. I just think it adds a more handmade look to it. So that is everything I have for today's episode five. I have the two tips to reiterate was why I use spots and what they're good for and... The tip of using the colored DSP to get white core. And that is it for today. And here are both cards. And again, I'll have the pictures of them in the showcase. And for the pre-made cards that I already did, I have one more episode to do. That's episode six. So that's what's coming up. Be sure to do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.